morning. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So some of you are probably a little bit confused. John, why is the M3 still in your possession? And I just wanted to explain a little bit before we got into this video why I still have this car. So you guys obviously saw the video where I said I was selling the M3 and I had a buyer and I thought it was actually already sold. Well, it turns out that buyer fell through. We were in the final stages of the actual deal and I had been working with him and his banker for about a week. I had already signed the power of attorney. I had already signed the bill of sale. Pretty much everything was done and it was ready to go. And then I got a call from him thinking that he was calling to set up the transport when in fact he was calling to bail out of the deal. It was a little bit shocking because I did feel like this guy was a legitimate buyer and I did feel like he actually wanted the car and I still think he did but he said he ran into some financial hardships and I'm not really gonna dive into the details as to what his financial hardships were. I did have other offers on the table. So I had the car up for $34,000 and I had a couple of offers for 30K cash and $32,000. Most of the people were out of state and I really didn't want to deal with any out of state transactions just because there's a lot more that goes into that process when it comes to transporting the vehicle, taking in the money, making sure it's legit. If I were to sell the car, I just wanted to make sure that it was someone who was local. So I still had the car up for sale for a while, did have a lot of interest in it right around the ballpark of what I was looking for, but I made the mistake of, of driving the car. <laughs> I, that might seem silly, but I made the mistake of driving the car a few times and watching a few more videos on it and I just couldn't part with it. It was just one of those things where this car is just so, it's so unique, man. This like this V8 just screams and it just sounds so good. And it's not like I necessarily have to get rid of this car. Like it's not pressing me financially to hang on to the car. So long story short, I decided to hang on to this car and continue doing stuff to it. I think there are still some things that I wanna iron out with this car, like the suspension isn't really what I want it to be like. Now that I have the KWs on the M2, the KWs just feel so good that I wanna take the suspension that's on here right now, take it off and put on KWs because I think it's just such a superior ride quality to anything else that I've ever tried. The coilovers on here are like a thousand dollar coilover set. And they're just not, they're just not that great. Like they make a lot of noise and they're, they could be better. I feel like this car deserves a better suspension than what it has now. There are also some other minor things that I want to change with the car. I might take off the wrap in a few weeks. I just want to change some things up on it. And I think that when I actually do sell the car, I do want to sell the car without it being wrapped because I want to show the buyer the paint and the quality of the paint and that it's in perfect condition. There were some people on the previous post that I made saying that the car did not actually sell that came to conclusions saying that there was some conspiracy about the quality of the car or the buyer being fake or all of this stuff I mean all of that is is basically bull I had a PPI in the car I even made a video on it. this car is immaculate clean from inside out the engine is perfect there's literally nothing wrong with this car it's in fantastic condition but as you guys know on YouTube there's always gonna be people trolling you there's always gonna be people thinking that there's some deeper conspiracy involved in anything that you do. So it's easy for me to dismiss those comments. But I did just want to address this overall situation with you guys because a lot of people were asking, is the car sold? Is it not sold? Is it for sale? Do you still have it? Yes, I still have it. I'm hanging on to it. I'm gonna continue doing content with it. But if the right seller comes by and it's an easy transaction, I will take it for the right amount of money. So for right now, we're hanging on to it. We're gonna continue on with some mods, but let's talk a little bit about what we're working on today. Tommy L Garage sent me more mud flaps, splash guards for the E series. Now you guys saw me do a video of these splash guards on my F series, my M2, and I absolutely love them, dude. They are so clean, they go on so well, and they look really, really good. But most importantly, you guys, they're so functional. And this is something that I've always wanted on this car, but I couldn't find the right ones until Tommy told me that he can make them. And as soon as I did these ones on my M2, I knew right away that I wanted to do a set on the E-Series. So I reached out to Tommy and he was kind enough to send out a set for my car. And I'm actually gonna be making the template for him to mass produce these for other E-Series owners. So at the end of this video, if you guys are interested in buying a set, please hit up Tommy L Garage. Tommy, thank you so much for sending these out. And 
the most important part about these mud flaps or these splash guards is that they are very functional, you guys, and that's really all I care about. I wanna save the paint, save the body from getting rocks on it, dirt, all of that. It just makes everything so much easier and it keeps the quality of the car and the condition of the car maintained. So yes, I love them. I'm gonna continue rocking them and now we're gonna put them on the E-Series. Let's head back to the house and throw them on. So we're gonna pull the M3 into this garage. I have all the tools in this garage, so that's why I'm swapping the cars out. All right, so let's talk about everything that you're gonna need and everything that comes with them. You're gonna have obviously the two fronts and then the two rears, which are the larger splash guards. And then also you're gonna get a bag of rivets and self-tapping screws. Now typically these will have pre-drilled holes for you so you'll know where to drill into the actual splash guard. But I am actually making the template for Tommy and then sending these back. I actually have two full sets, so I'll make a set for me and then I'll make a template for Tommy and send them back so he can actually go ahead and make these for other people in the future. As far as tools, pretty straightforward. You are gonna have to take off the rear wheels when you do it, but for the front ones, you can just turn the wheel and get in there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and use our torque wrench where we put them back on, torque the wheels back down, breaker bar to break the lugs free, and then obviously my drill and my impact. So like I said, for the rear assembly, you're gonna go ahead and take off the rear wheel, and then we'll get back there and do some self-tapping. And then for the front, we're just gonna simply turn the wheel and sneak back there and throw them on. So especially with the M cars, we obviously have really, really wide stance. And as you can see, the wheel sticks out. So what happens is you get all this dirt and debris that flies over the side of your car. And especially if you're running side skirt extensions, this thing just gets covered with dirt. This is really why I, I prefer to run these, just because it preserves the side of the car and you get far less dirt and rock chips on the side of your paint. Typically with these super wide hips, what happens is you'll get spit up from the front and it goes all over the side into the wide hips. And then back here, obviously the same deal. Tire sticks out and this gets filthy. So we'll have some coverage over here and then we'll have some coverage in the front and that should eliminate all of these issues and that is really why I like to do this. It's all about function for me guys. So I'm gonna start with the rear just because we have to take off the wheels and that's like the more difficult one. Let's go ahead and jack the car up, pull the wheel off and get to it. All right, so here's obviously where we're gonna be working. And the majority of the screws are gonna be laid into this plastic back here. So just a couple of self-tapping screws will get the job done for us. I'm gonna go ahead and line it up and see what looks best. So when you do this, you wanna make sure that the logo is facing towards the tire and this will eventually wear off over time. All right, so here is what I ended up with. I've got one up here, one right there, one right there. And then I had to go and grab a longer one because the way that this fender liner is recessed against the bumper is a lot longer than what it is on the F-Series. So I went and got a two inch long screw and I'll just paint the head of this black, but I'll let Tommy know so he can include a couple of two inch long screws that are black with the whole kit. So you won't have a silver one, you'll obviously have a black one. But you will need a longer one in order for this to stay snug against here. That will give us as much coverage as we need. It looks pretty aggressive right now, but once you see how big this tire is on here, it makes a lot more sense. So let's go ahead and throw the wheel back on and I'll show you guys the actual fitment of it. That's kind of how I have it set up. But the nice thing is, you know, when you're looking at the car like this, it's hardly noticeable. Like these are very, very minimal because they don't wrap around the sides or anything. And at the same time, they're covering up the bottom over here so you're not getting a bunch of dirt and crap on the back. But I think that that is honestly perfect right there. I think it's just right about where you want it. And that also leaves you with the mud flap sitting perfectly flat on the bottom like that. So. I like that setup. We're gonna roll with it. I made some marks in the 
first one as to what which ones were good. And then I also made like an outline of where the fender sits. So Tommy knows when he produces the right ones, it'll have the marks and everything for you with the outline so you'll know where to put it on. So now that we have this one set, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on the front now. We don't need to jack the car up for the front, we just need to turn the wheel. All right, so we're in the front left wheel well. And just to show you guys, the E series, unlike the F series, the E series does not have any of those factory rivets. So what you're gonna be doing is taking the flap and setting it up kind of how you want it, position it to where you want it exactly. I'm going to be using a couple of screws, one right here and then possibly one right here. Get that top one in, you can kind of get back here and look at it and see what is about right. So you guys also have to remember that my, my wheels have a lot of camber because my car is dropped. So something with a slight angle might be beneficial for me. It's very, very minimal. You could go way more aggressive. I mean, you could come out further, go down further. But the front of this car is rather low, so I don't want this hanging too far down. But I think that honestly, I think that that is going to be enough for me. As far as the screws are concerned, I did one right here, one in the middle and then two over here. Ended up with four. That felt like the best fitment and placement. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the template for Tommy. I'm gonna throw in the other side and then I'll pull this car outside. Kind of show you guys what it looks like out in the, uh, in the actual daylight. But I think that this is, um, this is really good. I think these are solid the way they're at right now. So I wanna show you guys a little bit of what I've been doing on this side that's just a little bit different than that side. So if we look over here, you'll see that I notched out this because this side of the car actually has this plastic bulging piece. So you kind of have to cut around that. The template that I'm giving to Tommy will have that cut out. So I'm sure that he'll end up cutting it out much cleaner than I did. Um, but as you can see, that's kind of how I have it cut out. And then up top here, I ended up using a rivet rather than a screw because the frame sits closer to the liner. If you end up using one of these screws, it'll push the liner out. But if you use a rivet, they're much shorter. So the rivet won't actually push the liner out. That's why I used a rivet up on that side. So I got a rivet up top, three screws down here. Now I didn't have to do that for the other side, it was only for the passenger side. So, food for thought, just so you know. But we're all done now. I'm gonna pull the car out and show you guys what it looks like. All right, here we are out in the open. So I'm gonna show you guys what they look like. Got the front one up here. Looking good, looking good. And like I said, you guys can run it more aggressive if you want, but I don't really see any reason to. Um, it's covering as much as I want it to. It's actually already collecting a bunch of crap just from the ride over here. But yeah, that's the front left setup. And then come to the back. There's the back setup. So that's the back. Show you guys how it's positioned there. Lined up. Looks good. See, I mean, these are so minimal, man. Like you can hardly even tell they're on the car. That's what I love about them. They're just like so, so minimal. Super clean, but functional. And that's all I really care about, to be honest with you. I just wanted to make sure that I was preserving this car, especially now that I'm keeping it. It's not set up like that. Looks good. Go up to the front, same deal. And you'll see, you can see right there, all the stuff that I was working around. It's already, look at all that stuff it's collected, man. That's just for the ride over here. That would be on my car right now. But it's not. It's on my Tommy L Garage mud flap. <laughs> yeah, these are great. 
I love them. I have them on the M2. Love them. And now we got them on the E90. I just find it so funny that some people are like, gross, remove those mud flaps. Like, bro, you can't even see them. Like, what are you talking about? They're so minimal and they just, they help so much with like dirt and crap. It gets on your car. I, I just think they're a no brainer, man. But you know, you don't want to run them. You do you, boo. All right, so I'm gonna get with Tommy and send him all the information on the templates and everything so he can go ahead and make these for you guys. Huge shout out to Tommy L Garage. I'm gonna leave all of his info down below, his Instagram and his YouTube. He does have a YouTube and it's mostly F80 content, but he does a little bit of everything in the BMW community. So make sure you guys go subscribe to him, check him out. And Tommy, thank you again for sending out the mud flaps. I personally love them. I would not run my BMW without them. I highly suggest you guys do it too, but I will leave that up to you. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Please do subscribe, comment down below, like this video, hit that bell notification. Just like that, this video is over and we're out.